Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here with yet again another different kind of video. In this video here I'm going to do a retro. A retro what? A retro fit. Now this guitar is plugged in and I do have a sound, secret sound hole up on the top and I noticed here that I do have a spring in there. Listen to that sucker. Um, this one here is number 65. Wah, wah, wah. All right, so what I'm going to do with this one here is, is first off, I want you to hear what it sounds like before. This is the before, and then you're going to have a before and after. So this is the, the before of the before and after. So here we go. Okay, so to me, it's eh, doesn't really sound that good. Here's my problem. Let me unplug this first. Get this off. All right, here's the problem. So this guitar here, the neck on this guitar is one of my best necks that I've ever built. And that is why I kept this guitar. Um, if you look at it really close, it's a one piece, right? There is no glue part here. This is just a solid one piece. And then notice the taper from here to here, subtle taper. Um, and then it's I sanded it right there. The, um, I don't know, I don't know if you can tell from, from this here, but the neck is just super, super straight. Um, the frets perfectly leveled, perfectly dressed. Um, of course, the the headstock is scarf with wings. I mean, every this it seriously. When, when, once look how thin the neck is right here. I mean, that is just it's just it just feels like butter, plays like butter, but kind of sounds like crap. All right. So anyhow, this thing has been just sitting on my wall over here, the the wall of fame or the wall of shame, whatever. Um, and it's been up there so long. Look, look at this dust here that's on here. I'm gonna, I don't know if you can see this or not, but it's just dust. Watch this. Watch this. Ready? Okay. So anyhow, I'm going to retrofit this. First off, I'm pretty sure that the humba or the uh, piezo is not underneath the saddle. I'm pretty sure that's off to somewhere. I will figure it out when we get in there, take it apart, and take a look at it. Um, Oh yeah, there is one thing I wanted to point out here that I, I made a little mistake there and didn't quite line up my uh, my string holes. I mean, it's lined up on the top side perfectly there, but I had a little little angular coefficient going on right there, so that's that was a little mistake. But nah, that that doesn't really bother me at all. Um, but getting back to what I said, I'm going to retrofit this with a humbucker, and I'm going to put it here in the neck position. A neck position humbucker, a switch that'll switch between the piezo and the humbucker, and then I'll leave this guy alone. Oh, and a little bit of information here. This volume uh, knob here was in my junk drawer, and it came with an Ibanez guitar that I had bought in the early 80s. That's a little trivia there with that little volume control knob. Okay, um... That being said, before we get started here, this pickup here was handmade by a friend of mine named Bart Blankenship. And I will put his contact information in the video description below. Okay? And so we are going to mount this guy strategically right underneath here. And... I'm guaranteeing you it's going to sound a lot better than what it does now. All right. On your marks. Get set. Go! So 
something very interesting. <clears throat> so I have two springs. And look where I put the piezo on the top here. So I have a piezo here, right here. And I noticed that there's another one on the back side of the neck right there. Interesting, huh? So there's two piezos, one on the back side of the neck and one on the top. And you can see that wire goes right through there on the top to get to this piezo. So I didn't even I didn't even route the wire underneath. I just for whatever reason what was I thinking? And another thing. Look at this here. There's not even a bolt here holding this. See how this is not even connected right here? So there's no bolt holding this neck piece in here. So there's only one bolt holding the neck in, and that is right here. Holding it into this block right there. So interesting design interesting design for sure oh yeah and i'll show you I'll, sh I'll show you something else up close here check this out now that i take this thing apart i remember i had to shave this piece right here to get it to slide underneath here and then for some reason there's a there's a pick hot glued in there a little gap pick See it, the green thing? So, all right, time to take it all apart now. And to make matters worse, whoever built this guitar used a star instead of a Phillips. Knucklehead. Gotta use a star bit to take that thing off. All right, we got the neck off. And I got my chisel, and I'm going to pry off this piezo that's been hot glued to the underside of the neck. Man, that was on there really good. That was not coming off. Look at that cute little tiny little spring. As bad as that is, this neck is awesome. So anyhow, that is why we are doing the retrofit here. Okay, so I'm also gonna take off this piezo from the underside of the top. That was easy. That was easy. Okay, now it's just a matter of rehooking it up correctly. Before we install this here, I want to compare the resistance of this pickup to the store box, whatever. Okay, so I have this set here to the 20K. And I'm going to set that right there so we can see it. Okay, so first off, I'm going to measure a single coil. So the single coil is going to measure about four, four K ohms. That's the single coil. This four pole humbucker measures in at nine point three six K ohms. This is one of those screaming hot rail style pick uh, humbuckers. 
and that measures at seven k ohms. I think I'm right on that. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure if these wires are hooked up right or not. This here came out of um, the junk guitar that I found at a garage sale. I have no idea what it is. I think I paid five five dollars for the whole thing. That comes in at eight point nine k ohms. This. I actually got by dumpster diving. Can you believe me dumpster diving? It's true. And that comes in at what, nine point, is that nine? Yeah, nine, nine K ohms. All right. Here we go. Let's see what we got here. Two point eight K ohms. All right. So it might not be as loud, perhaps, as the others, but we, at least we know it works. I replaced those springs with some nice, normal sounding springs. And I also drilled a hole here so that I could have a proper mount both here and here. Something to point out here, this is a 25 inch scale neck and 25 inches comes right up here to the edge. So I had to um, drill out my hole halfway on the block and halfway on the neck piece itself. So that means that if I ever have to take apart this neck, I'm going to have to remove the piezo. So that's just kind of a uh, unfortunate situation right there. I guess I could have moved it up or back a little bit. Probably wouldn't have mattered. Um, but to get it right underneath the saddle, it has to be right there on that divide, right at the end of this neck piece here. The other thing I was thinking about doing was adding another secret sound hole on the bottom side here so I could have a sound hole here and a sound hole here. I think that'd be nice. That way I could reach in and um, like I'm reaching in here, I'd be able to reach in on this side. Get this guy. So I think I'll do that as well. All right, the next problem I had to resolve is how am I going to ground the strings? Or ground the bridge since I'm gonna have a humbucker on here I'm gonna to need to ground this thing here so what I did is I got my long this is a foot long eighth of an inch bit and I drilled right here a hole came out here and so what I'm gonna do is run my ground wire to one of those grommets right there so that that string is grounded and then so once that string is grounded then it'll come up to the top of the um, fret on the saddle and then the fret will ground all the strings that's the strategy anyway okay kids I'm going to show you how to solder the piezo so what I do is First off, I put a little bit of solder on the piezo, and how I do that is I just put, I get a hot soldering iron, and I put some solder on the tip of the soldering iron, and then I just touch it to where I want it on the piezo. It's pretty easy. And then I do the same thing. I put solder on the leads of the wire. So I have solder on the piezo already, and solder on the leads and a hot soldering iron and then I just put the lead on top of 
the solder glob that's on the piezo and I just touch it really fast, let it go, and then it connects. So it's a really fast, you're not going to sit there and hold it, you're just going to touch it as fast as you can. And just like that, you have leads soldered onto your piezo. And then you remember how I put the piezo embedded in there, right? I just put a dabble of hot glue in there. Then I put the piezo in, let it dry. Then I put some more hot glue on. Kind of fill it up. And then I get a piece of paper. And then I just smash the top in place so that the underside of the cigar box guitar top makes flush, smooth contact with that paper, the piezo. And the reason why the paper is there is so that the hot glue doesn't stick to the underside top of the cigar box. And so once it's dried, that's what it looks like, nice and smooth. Next, I cut a little square, one and a half inch by one and a half inch. And then I put a little groove there for the wires to go through and hot glued it to the underside here and then screwed it in on the four corners so that it would fit perfectly. Quick look on the inside before we button it up. And you can see here that we have the three-way switch. I have the piezo going to one side of the switch. And then the other side of the switch goes to the humbucker. Everything's grounded. The output of the switch goes to the input of the potentiometer. The output of the potentiometer goes to the jack. And I do have an extra ground wire. It's going to go through that hole and ground the strings. All right, it's time to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. fish through that little ground wire and I grounded it underneath that grommet. Now what I'm going to do to cover up this mess is I got me a sticker. I'm going to put the sticker on it and then poke holes for the strings. So that's how you cover up a multitude of sins right there. So the strings we took off were a little bit old. You can see how dingy they were. These are five-year-old strings. So I got me a brand new pack. I get these from, from the CBD. And what I like about these guys here is what it says right there. Made in America. All right, so I like to use these guys here. These are the 44 gauge, the 34 gauge, and a 26 gauge. All right, here we go. All right, we got the strings on and we are tuned up and intonated. <clears throat> and I'm plugged into the same exact sound or the same exact settings that I was um, at the beginning of this video where I did this, the, the pre so that you could have a before and after. Okay, so this is the after. So in order to be fair, I'm gonna put it on the piezo. And this is the sound. Right. 
strings are stretching. You can hear those. And I did put another sound hole here on the bottom so I can reach in and grab this guy. And I can also peekaboo. Hey, how's it going? So, ooh. But what happened there? Huh? Tickle it. <laughs> so you're also hearing new strings as well. All right, let's hear that humbucker. So here's the humbucker. Okay, it's gonna be way out of tune now. Listen, listen. All right, let me tune it back up. Hang on. All right, we are tuned up a second time. All right, so you heard the piezo and you heard the humbucker. Now we're gonna hear the humbucker and the piezo. So you will be happy to know that I painstakingly took the time and the effort to match. Remember I told you that this screw here was a one of those star? Well, I also found a matching screw for this guy here. So that the poor sucker who has to take this thing apart is going to have to find a star bit to take this thing apart. And I also covered this guy with a sticker. So that in order to get to the to the strings, because the strings go all the way through, right, he's going to have to take apart this sticker or else cut it out with a knife or whatever, drill a hole to get access. I think I'm also going to put a strap button, and I'll put it right here into this block that goes right here on the inside, because I don't want to screw it through here because these strings do go all the way through. All right, that's it. I hope you enjoyed these videos. If you do, be sure to give it a thumbs up, a like, a share, a subscribe. And don't forget, there is a link to my Patreon in the uh, upper right-hand corner of my YouTube channel. I'll put all the information in the video description below as well. And don't forget to check out Bart Blankenship and give him a shout-out for this uh, wonderful sounding pickup there. Oh, my gosh. All right, Bart, thank you, and thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.